One of my favorite examples of the application of the Euler-Lagrange approach to dynamics is to consider a bead on a spinning wire hoop. So imagine we've got a, a wire, a circular wire hoop with radius r, shown here. Here's our little bead, mass m. Um, we're going to refer its uh, its position, re refer to its position using the angle theta. So that's measured relative to uh, this line right here, basically vertical straight down. And we imagine that the the hoop is spinning about a third dimension, omega, with an angular velocity omega. Now intuitively, what we expect is if the if the hoop is spinning really fast, so if omega is really big, uh, the bead is going to go from, say, the bottom point here up to the, uh, to 90 degrees uh, because the centrifugal accelerations due to the spinning are going to basically push it up against gravity along the wire. But it turns out that if, it's, uh, if omega is small enough, uh, then the bead can actually stay down here and oscillate back and forth around an equilibrium position. Okay, so let's see how that comes out by using the Euler-Lagrange approach. Now for the kinetic energy term in the Lagrangian, we have two kinds of motion we need to think about. There can be motion along the theta direction, so that's up and down the wire. Um, and then of course we have uh, kinetic energy associated with motion uh, due to the angular spinning of the hoop. So that's omega. So we've got theta motion, we've got omega motion. Okay, so the theta motion is pretty easy to account for. We've got one half m r squared times theta dot squared. And so we've got the, the radius uh, having to do with rotation about the theta direction times theta dot, so that's the angular velocity, and so then the whole linear velocity squared gives us r squared theta dot squared. Now, the motion due to omega, that's a little more difficult. Um, of course, we have an omega here, so that's the angular velocity, but the radius around which that angular uh, motion takes place, that's going to actually depend upon theta. So, for example, if theta is zero and the bead is right at the bottom down here, there won't be any angular motion uh, around due to uh, the omega motion. So basically, there will be no kinetic energy associated with that motion. At the same time, if the bead is up at 90 degrees over here, uh, then the omega motion is uh, corresponds to the largest uh, amount of velocity that you can have uh, for a given uh, omega. And so it turns out that uh, what we need is the radius uh, of rotation about uh, due to the omega motion, and that is going to be r times sine of theta. When theta is zero and we're down here, that radius for the uh, omega motion is going to be zero, and when theta is 90 degrees and you're up here, that omega motion is going to be r. And so this gives us our whole uh, kinetic energy for our Lagrangian. Okay, so now to think about the potential energy, uh, we imagine that our bead is up at an angle of theta, uh, we know that the gravitational potential energy in a constant gravitational field is mgh, the height above some reference surface. And so the obvious reference to take here is height above the bottom point down here. So h is going to be capital R, the radius of the circle, which is this length here, minus this length right here. Well, this is a right triangle right here. Um, this angle right here in the in the top of the uh, triangle is theta, and so we can write the length of this part of the triangle as r cosine theta. In other words, h is just going to be capital R times the quantity 1 minus cosine theta. And so our potential energy is just going to be written as mgr times the quantity 1 minus cosine theta. Of course, this term right here is a constant, and so it only contributes a constant to the potential energy, so we can essentially toss it and rewrite our, our potential energy as mg r cosine theta. Okay, so here's our Lagrangian. We've got our kinetic energy right here, which has this sort of funny term, which now depends on theta, so that's going to be really important. Omega, omega we're assuming is a constant, and so it doesn't represent uh, a variable coordinate that we need to take account of uh, in this problem. It doesn't do any dynamics, essentially, on its own. Uh, and then we have our potential energy right here, so minus our potential energy right here. We can apply the Euler-Lagrange equation uh, to relate our generalized forces to our generalized momenta, and in this case we'll find out that the generalized uh, force is actually going to be a torque, and the generalized momentum, well that's going to turn out to be an angular uh, momentum. Okay, So the partial theta derivative is going to give us two terms. We're going to get this term. This term, of course, comes from here, and then we're going to get this term, and that's just due to the gravity. So we've got two torques, 
We've got one torque uh, that relates to the centrifugal accelerations. That's going to want to drive the, the theta value up to 90 degrees. And then we've got a second term. That's the torque due to gravity, which wants to pull the mass back down to the bottom of the loop. This is, of course, all equal to a time derivative of this term right here. And so that gives us m r squared theta double dot. We can divide both sides through by m and r squared. And now what we'll get is theta double dot is going to be equal to omega squared times the sine theta cosine theta minus g over r sine theta. Now, if omega squared were 0 or close to 0, then we'd see that theta double dot would just be minus g over r times the sine of theta. This would just be our harmonic oscillator in that case. Uh, but of course, we don't have theta dot, or excuse me, theta squared equal to 0. We have this uh, expression instead. And so now we can ask some interesting questions about the dynamics of this system. So this system gives rise to some interesting uh, stability behavior. Um, let's look at first the question of when can we make theta double dot equal to zero? Well, since the right-hand side of our original equation has an omega squared cosine theta minus g over r, we find that if omega squared cosine theta minus g over r, if that's zero, then we have uh, theta double dot equal to zero. And that course, that will happen when theta is equal to, say, some theta naught, uh, which is equal to the arc cosine of g over omega squared r. Um, and we'll see that that represents an, an interesting equilibrium potentially in a second. Let's consider the case that theta is small, so we're down near the bottom of our spinning hoop. When theta is small, sine theta, of course, is roughly theta, and then cosine theta is going to be about 1. That changes our dynamical equation, theta double dot, into this equation here. And so we, then we can see that uh, theta double dot is going to be uh, have a term which is proportional to theta. So in order for theta equals 0 to be a stable point, theta double dot has to be uh, negative theta. In other words, the acceleration for theta has to drive theta back into the opposite direction. So if theta is a positive number, then the acceleration needs to be into the negative theta direction. If theta is a negative number, then the acceleration needs to be into positive uh, theta direction. So that means that this term right here needs to come out to be negative in order for theta equals 0 to be a point of stability. And so that puts a specific requirement on the relationship between omega squared and g over r. Uh, in order for this theta equals 0 point to be stable, omega squared has to be less than g over r. In other words, the hoop can't be spinning around too fast. Otherwise, uh, a small push of the bead away from theta equals 0 will make the bead run up the side of the hoop away from theta equals 0. So let's consider the case where uh, omega squared is greater than g over r. So now we have a uh, fa fairly fast rotation rate. Of course, our dynamical equation is this. If theta is not necessarily equal to 0, but instead, say, we're close, uh, excuse me, if theta is equal to 0, then we know already that um, omega squared being greater than g over r means that theta equals 0 is an unstable equilibrium. So a little nudge uh, away from theta equals 0 will mean that the, the bead will slide up the wire away from theta equals 0. So now that is no longer a stable equilibrium. But let's consider that equilibrium point we talked about earlier, theta 0. Of course, remember, theta 0, uh, its cosine is g over omega squared r. So the question we want to ask now is, OK, so is that an, a stable equilibrium point? And so in order to ask that, we have to ask, how does theta double dot change uh, as theta changes when theta is close to this value theta dot? OK. So for theta a bit bigger than theta naught, uh, the cosine of theta is going to be less than the cosine of theta naught. And so what that means is that this first term here in the parentheses is going to be less than the second term here in the parentheses. The sine theta over here, that's going to remain positive uh, for theta greater than theta naught. And so what we get is that theta double dot, for the case that theta is, sl is slightly greater than theta naught, that theta double dot is going to be a negative number times a positive number. So theta double dot will be negative, meaning that the acceleration will drive theta back toward theta dot, excuse me, back toward theta naught. In the case that theta is less than theta naught, we find, using a similar analysis, that we get theta double dot equal to some positive number, again, times sine theta, which is positive. And so that means that if theta is smaller than theta naught, the acceleration will drive theta up until it reaches theta naught again. So in other words, uh, when theta is greater than theta naught, the acceleration will drive the bead back down toward theta naught. 
when theta is less than theta naught, the acceleration will drive it back up. And so that means that theta naught will be a stable equilibrium. And so this is an interesting case where uh, we can actually change the points of equilibrium for our system by changing slightly our setup. This represents what's called a bifurcation uh, in the system, a bifurcation of the stability.